The 42nd chapter of the book of Isaiah in the Bible clearly foretells the coming of an Arabian prophet, specifically Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Isaiah describes itself as a prophecy about the future. The former things have taken place, and new things I declare. Isaiah describes a very special person that God will send. My servant, whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. At least three of the names of the Prophet Muhammad are mentioned. Servant, chosen one, and in whom I delight. Prophet Muhammad is known as God's servant. In Arabic, Abdullah. Chosen one is Mustafa in Arabic. This is another of the names of the Prophet Muhammad. The one in whom God delights in shows that this person is beloved to God. Habibullah in Arabic, which means beloved of God, also happens to be one of the Prophet Muhammad's names. I say it also reveals the location of this special person. He states, Let the wilderness and its towns raise their voices. Let the settlements where Kedar lives rejoice. Out of all the nations on earth, he chose to highlight Kedar's location so we should pay special attention. Throughout the Bible, Kedar and his sons are linked to Arabia. For example, the book of Ezekiel tells us that Arabia and all the princes of Kedar were your favorite dealers in lambs, rams and goats. In these they did business with you. I say it goes on to narrow the location down further to a specific city within Arabia. He states that the people of Selah should sing for joy. Let them shout from the mountaintops. The place Selah pinpoints the exact location in Arabia. The place being spoken of is the city of Medina in Saudi Arabia because Selah is the name of a famous mountain in Medina. Medina was the city of the Prophet Muhammad. I say it informs us that the special person will bring something new. Mankind is told that we will sing to the Lord a new song, His praise from the ends of the earth. The statement a new song means a new law, a new way of worship. This is exactly what Islam represents. The emphasis on the new song here is singing the praise of God all over the earth. The Quran opens with the statement, Praise be to God, Lord of the worlds, and is recited by Muslims all over the world during prayers every day. The new song cannot refer to Jesus. Jesus obeyed and followed the law of Moses throughout his life. Jesus didn't sing a new song. He sang the same song of Moses, the Torah. Moreover, the disciples of Jesus also followed the law of Moses, even after Jesus departed. I say it emphasizes the universal mission of the coming person by mentioning that he will be made a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles. Gentiles means non-Jews. The Quran confirms the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent to the whole of mankind, Jews and Gentiles alike. In the Quran, God tells us, We have sent you, O Prophet, as a bearer of glad tidings and a warner for the whole of mankind, but most people have no knowledge. The verse in Isaiah cannot apply to Jesus, because in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Isaiah further states that he will, Lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. The pagan Arabs at the time of the Prophet Muhammad fit this description perfectly because they had not been sent a messenger prior to Muhammad. The Quran bears witness to this. God states that Muhammad was sent to warn a people to whom no warner has come before. The verse in Isaiah cannot apply to Jesus because his people, the Israelites, had already received a multitude of prophets from God. I say it emphasizes that this special person will be sent to those who trust in idols, who say to images, you are our gods. The whole of Arabia at the start of Muhammad's prophethood consisted of idol worshippers. 
Again, this cannot be a reference to Jesus because his people, the Israelites, were monotheists and not idol worshippers. Moreover, Jesus explicitly told his disciples to stay away from the idol worshipping Gentiles. The exact opposite of Isaiah, the Gospel of Matthew tells us that these twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions Do not go among the Gentiles. Isaiah states that this special person will be a warrior and will go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. Throughout history, God has dealt sternly with those who are sent guidance and persist in disbelief. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had to engage in many battles with the idol-worshipping enemies of God and ultimately prevailed against them. By comparison, Jesus did not triumph over his enemies. According to Christians, he was crucified by them. Moreover, Jesus wasn't interested in fighting. He was not a man of war. He was a pacifist, according to the Bible. He said such things as, For all who draw the sword will die by the sword. And, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight. I say it gives us a list of momentous achievements for this special person. Chief of these is that the idol worshippers will be turned back in utter shame. Not only did the Prophet Muhammad conquer Mecca, the pagan capital of Arabia, but by the end of his life, in just 23 short years of prophethood, Arabia had shunned idol worship and now worshipped the one true God of Abraham. This cannot apply to Jesus as it was Christians themselves who were humiliated and greatly ashamed for hundreds of years after Jesus. They were persecuted at the hands of the Roman Empire who were idol worshippers. They executed some of the apostles of Jesus such as Peter and Paul. Christians were tortured and even fed to the lions. Finally, Isaiah closes with an admonishment. Hear you deaf. Look, you blind and see. You have seen many things, but you pay no attention. Your ears are open, but you do not listen. Which of you will listen to this or pay close attention in time to come? It seems clear that the deaf and blind are those who reject Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Who among you will heed God by acknowledging him? Who will listen and pay close attention in time to come? الذين يتبعون الرسول النبي الأمي الذي يجدونه مكتوبا عندهم في التوراة والإنجيل يأمرهم بالمعروف 